Okay, all right. Welcome back to the Make Lemonade podcast, the show brought to you by Lemon Squeezy, as we hope to inspire you to earn money from your own lemonade stand. I'm one of your co-hosts, James, and I'm back here with JRFR, co-founder of Lemon Squeezy. How are you doing, JR? Good, man. I'm doing good. I'm excited to talk today. I, I have a little surprise you haven't caught yet that I'm waiting for you to see. Well, the first surprise, if people are watching this on YouTube and if they're listening to it, I would recommend going and having a look at this on YouTube and just seeing how beautiful JR's setup looks. JR, how did this happen? You've gone from prison basement with some odd spotlight on you to the white wood, the skateboard to now this stunning setup. How has that happened? I know. I'm a, I'm a straight baller right now. I feel almost overdressed for the occasion now. <laughs> I've done like too much. So, but my wife made it super fancy. And so now I'm just going to roll with it and just, just own the fact that I am, I am glamour. I'm glamorous at this point. <laughs> I I've, am reached, glamour. I've reached that point. Yeah. And you're actually out doing me now because usually I'm in my nice setup, my office at home where I've got the lights and I think it looks quite nice. And I, I, I was always looking good, but now I'm in a different location for this recording and I can't get over this up. I also can't believe you didn't tell me because we, we've been going well, back I, and forth trying to get I know, your setup right. I know, and I kept right. saying, and you kept saying to me that don't overplay this, don't overplay this. And I, I was trying to tell you, man, I think <laughs> I, I think I found my niche here. Well, I, you if said lemon you squeezy doesn't work out, I'm going to do podcast setup for people now. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to know what's the what, what's the other surprise I haven't noticed. So, oh no, no hold on, I, I know, I know what it is. I know what it is. Do you? Is it your hat? Yeah, I'm a big yeah. hat guy. But yeah, look at that. We got so we've been so people since we've launched. I don't know how long it's been now. A couple of years, three years. People have asked for swag for so long, and it's been kind of like a thing where I've just dug my heels in, saying we're not doing this until we feel like we can. But anyway, we've uh, we've have a huge email list of people wanting the swag. So we've been doing like quality control, like design and sizing. And so anyway, I got a few things. Gilbert's got a few things. I think you asked for some, you know, we have dad hats. This is like more of the flat brim type hat, like a new era hat. But we have, you know, we have all kinds of stuff that we're trying to test out. And then we're sending it to some of our larger merchants and then kind of go from there. But I'm excited. I, I like, I, I don't know. I think it's cool. I wanted a blacked out one. So the, the, the level of gangster you have now gone to with the all black setup, the black, did you wear the black shirt purposely as well? No, actually, no, I just, I just always wear black, but <laughs> it's just easier, but I'm not, I'm not Steve Jobs or anything, but you know, but it's just the, easier. the stealth look of the hat. I love black on black things when you just like, when it catches the light and it looks good, but I'm excited for my lemon squeezy one to come now, but I'm a bit jealous of your blacked out one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's cool. We'll get, we'll get more, we'll get more going, but I love it. All right, well, let's get into the topic of the episode. Bit of a serious one. We're going to be talking about the mental health side of building a fast growth bootstrap business and what steps you're taking, JR, as a CEO to take care of your own mental health and that of your employees. Um, but it's particularly poignant today that we're recording this episode. And it's not something we planned. You told me this and I didn't know it. Can you share more about why today is particularly poignant about talking about mental health? Yeah, it's great. So if we go back to like the first episode, I think you said these are the topics. We've got mm. Series A, we have shipping, some guests, and we have something about mental health. And as we got closer to this day, I mean, this is what, our fourth recording since season three? I Yeah, I looked at my calendar and realized that, you know, my old best friend, roommate, and COO of my last company, he this is the four-year anniversary of him passing away from mental health issues and I think that it's something that I've been very s afraid to talk about because I don't want to use his death as something that, you know, I speak about for anything other than for awareness and for like his memory. Does that make sense? Like, I don't want to use yeah. it to speak about it to get attention or like, so I've always, it's, it's been four years and I've, there's been, I, I just really don't talk about it a lot and that's probably not good, you know? And so I should yeah. use kind of what what happened and and yeah I, th I think it's it's just it's got to be there's like a greater power whatever you want to call it the fact that it's landed on this day and we're going to talk about this subject on the anniversary of like of that person in my life it's crazy crazy yeah 
I think what you touched upon just there that you almost feel like you don't talk about it often enough. And I feel like that's sometimes why mental health gets worse and worse and worse because people don't talk about it. And I feel like with my own experiences, the fact I've talked about it so openly on my podcast, on my blog, with family members, with friends, it's helped me navigate through it. Otherwise, you can struggle to deal with it. Yeah, and like, I think too, as we get into this, I, th I don't know how it'll be for people to listen to this episode. You know, I don't know if it'll be re received well. It's it's almost awkward for people to hear and talk about sometimes, you know, especially as men, right? Like, it's just a thing that, I mean, I grew up, in sports and you know like you just suck it up you know what i mean like it just that's definitely like the, the the attitude that i typically take but not saying that's the right one but yeah i mean when i when i look back and the one time i have talked about it i can scroll through the text and i can actually see that i did you know there was a constant check-in of how are you doing how are you today towards the end there was a lot of moments where he would he would need some time away and I would always, I was in an interesting position because in a position of the company that I ran or that I owned where I could give him the air cover that he needed, right? I could give him the week off or two weeks off or a yeah. day here, a day there or whatever. He would, I just kind of knew. And that went on for a long time. And, and I'm going back to the point where, you know, we were roommates. Gosh, that was in 2005. So we were almost 20 years ago, we were roommates and then came into Mojo and grew the ranks and eventually became the COO, which is like a really cool story of like how he got there. But did, yeah, so like we all kind of knew that he struggled a little bit with it. And, you know, even when it happened, it was definitely like, I don't think he was in the right mindset to even do what he did, but it did happen. And the way it happened was, you know, pretty sad. And it was, the other thing too, is, you know, just a few days away from Thanksgiving. So always around this mm -hmm. time now, it's like, whatever the origins of Thanksgiving are, there's a lot of different opinions, but like I just, the gratitude, the being grateful and appreciating the things that you have, it's like, it's amplified for me during this time because of like what surrounds that, you know, with him. You say that, uh, I don't know how this episode will be received. I know every time I've shared stuff, it's been well received in the sense that a lot more people than you think can relate to it around stuff that going on with mental health and sometimes they don't quite know how to broach it to yeah. friends to family they might not be open to therapy and yeah you know it's crazy too so this is actually i'm going to bring up a quick example and if you haven't seen it so it's basically there's this video going around that's really popular about mental health with men and it's these two best buds going to a football game soccer I've game seen it, yeah yeah, 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 right? And and you see the guy that's like really cheery and happy and then the guy's just kind of sitting in his, the other guy's sitting in the chair like, hey man, and he's like, how's your day? You know, and he's like, oh, it was all right. You know, and you kind of, the whole time you're thinking, man, this guy's really struggling. And at the end, the guy that was, looked like he was struggling actually brought a scarf and, you know, in memory of his friend who obviously, you know, took his own life. But it's the ones, that's who my friend was, was he was the one Every story, every memory of him is he would light up a room. He was so funny. He was really good looking dude. And he had it all, right? But he just, that was the part that, you know, so it, it, he was the one that was almost, if you didn't know him the way I knew him, you would have never known. You would have thought that he was happy as a clam, you know, because he, he could just get himself up for those moments. And then, you know, behind the scenes, there was, there was struggle going on. Yeah, dude, it's it's the times on your own way you really feel it. I, I outwardly I can look absolutely fantastic and great and upbeat, and I I can feel fine in the mm -hmm. moment. But it's then when you're alone with your thoughts or you're, you're putting on a show because you don't want to worry other people. That clip hit me because it was so relatable. Have Have you ever had any like mental health struggles or battles? Is this something? worth chatting about now or later on in the episode yeah no definitely i didn't know what you know people would talk a lot about the terms depression anxiety mm -hmm. i didn't really understand them i couldn't even really have sympathy let alone empathy which sounds awful but i just didn't understand it until for me when it hit me was i had i went through some you know craziness building my first startup bootstrapping it and then finally selling it and then it was almost this is how i describe it 
I was just under 30 years old. I was 29, sold the company. And I feel like once that happened, I had some stability in my life for the first time in a long time. And it was almost so quiet and normal that I didn't have the turbulence to keep me distracted. So like, I actually didn't know what to do in that space. Like I didn't know how to not be so go and go, 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 right. To distract me. So it kind of hit me out of nowhere. And, you know, just, that was, that was a lot. Like I didn't know actually even how to deal with that. And that was there. I mean, I was to a point where I was like going into doctors, getting my blood work done. Like, I think I'm dying. Like, I, I mean, I was like, what is wrong mm. with me? I cannot, I can't calm myself down. My nervous system feels like it's shot. Like, I don't know what to do. And I, you know, I did a lot of stuff. I think what really pulled me out of it personally, I'm not saying this is the answer for everyone, but I just got really in tune with, I guess, just my body in the sense of like my nutrition, my fitness, and it became oh, uh, very like the gym became a sanctuary for me. And as long as I, if you'd look at it, something like anxiety, that fight or flight, you know, you kind of freeze up, it requires action. So if you can just start walking, if you can start moving, the kind of pull out of it, right? And just that mental clarity, the dopamine, you know, all that stuff starts to happen that you just don't really think about when I grew up, had no idea about any of this stuff. And I felt like it literally fucking punched me in the face, like came out of nowhere. I was like, whoa, what, what is this? You know? And so, gosh, that was 10 years ago. And so I feel like I've really learned how to cope, you know, without alcohol or some sort of, you know, mechanism, I've been able to do it in a healthy way. And that I'm really proud of to, to actually say that I've actually never said that out loud at all. And so I'm proud of that. And, and I love recording this now that we're sitting in this moment, like for my kids to watch this and hear their, you know what I mean? Hear their dad be like, that's cool. You know, like he's, he's figured that out and, 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 and it's normal to deal with this, right? Like everybody, yeah. even my dad, who's like, to me is a superhero. He has these things too. Right. And that's okay. And it doesn't make that make me any less of a person. You know what I'm saying? So. How did you pull yourself out of that? Because like, it's all well and good saying what you should do, what you know you need to do in the moment. It's so hard to actually do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, looking back when it first happened, I didn't know what to do. It was months, maybe even years of struggle without people realizing the struggle. I could hide it pretty well. I could not go to things. I could you know, not show up to certain things. I was nervous something would happen or, you know what I mean? I kind of went through that for a long time. So it wasn't like just, it's not a, a light that just switched. And now I'm like, Oh, I'm good again. Like it just, yeah. it takes some time, right? Because you have pushed yourself for me. I had pushed myself to burnout and chaos and then didn't know how to sit in my own thoughts for a second. And you have to rewire your body and your mind and it takes some time. So for me, I, I guess it was just an, a, an exploration of, I mean, everything from hot yoga to food, nutrition, to, you know, <laughs> books and video games, video games help me that clients my mind down. I love doing stuff like that. I played, I picked up the guitar uh, with my son, you know, like I play hockey. I, that's why I think I'm almost 40 years old and I still play sports to this mm -hmm. day, you know, because I think it just, I, it's the digital detox. I can't have my phone. I'm moving my body and I come out of there and I'm just, you know what I mean? You kind of find these little things that work for you. And I don't know yeah. if it's different for you, but that's, that's kind of what's worked no, for me. You, you know, what's funny about this. I find so many similarities in how I first ran into mental health challenges and also how I'm dealing with it now. It's scarily similar and yeah. like all of the points you touched on about it, taking time, sport, exercise for me as well. When I was growing up, I had like, I had an interesting childhood stuff went on, but I'd never really had mental health challenges. I've never really understood it. And it wasn't until I took on extra freelance work combined with COVID. I don't know. I must've been 23, 24 and overworked myself. And then I left my job thinking, it's too much work and then ended up having too much time and not knowing how to deal with this time. And I always look back at that time when I had a job when I was living in London, when I was always in the go and I was hustling and I was making things happen to then just feeling this emptiness and not being able to make myself do what I know I needed to do. And it was the worst two years of my life and onwards. And it went up and down. I'd like feel like I was getting out of this 
depression and then I would just hit a brick wall again and I would do something that would get my motivation back a peak and then I'd go straight back down again so I was just dealing with these ups and downs and it took a lot of self-reflection a lot of journaling hiring therapists speaking to family understanding what other people have gone through sharing it on my own podcast I, it's probably not really been until this year that I've started to come out of it and it has been a bit that reflection, understanding that I need to be uncomfortable and push myself. Otherwise, I don't have much sense of meaning. I also need money in my bank account and being frugal and or just charging more has helped me feel a lot better because like, I, I've always had this money pressure since I've gone indie or freelance. And then more recently, it's been sport, exercise, nutrition. I feel so much better these last few weeks, JR, where I've been eating well, losing weight, not drinking beer there's certain times where i was down the dumps where i would just drink every day Mm -hmm. four or five beers a night and i would just get into a cycle of it because that was the only thing that would like remove that feeling for me i would sort of relax because of that getting comfortable with my own thoughts sitting in silence not being distracted and you play hockey i play tennis tennis is my three four times a week where i just lose myself in it But even like doing that, and I don't know if you've ever experienced this when you're feeling low, I struggled to enjoy my tennis because I would always be stressed about the things that I hadn't done at home or I'd be worrying about money or whatever. But since I've started to fix those things and take my recreation seriously, because I think those things are important to me, my health seriously. And then the final thing is doing things that make me feel uncomfortable and getting better at dealing with those things. yeah. Because that, that, I, that's a big one. I'd always try and comfort myself when I was feeling, well, I'll, I'll, I'll eat this McDonald's because that'll make me feel better. Comfort <laughs> foods are like, I'll take it easy. But actually, my body wants to push myself. I want to be uncomfortable in situations. And learning how to deal with that has made me happier because I have a challenge. I overcome the challenge. I feel great. And that actually came from cycling for me. I wanted to do cycling because it was fun. And I entered an event and I knew I hated going up hills and I know going up hills is really uncomfortable. And I had to reframe it that these hills, when I approached them, JR, I was going to enjoy them. I was going to relish the challenge. And the more (laughs) I did that, the more it flicked a switch. I was like, shit, being uncomfortable and then overcoming that challenge and being comfortable, being uncomfortable is part of what's helping me feel better mental health wise. Mm hmm. You know, I think, yeah, it's interesting to just, I, yeah, like you said, there's a lot of similarities and I'm sure everybody's listening to this, if they're even made it this far and they're, you know, they're kind of listening to this, I think they're probably nodding their heads like, oh yeah, I felt that too. And, you know, everyone has their own way of doing it, but the reality yeah. is, is, I mean, where it all boils down is like, we all struggle with certain things and that's okay. Like, I think that's like, that just helps me just be like, it's, it's okay. I think, um, you know, there's like inner work, there's like, you know, stuff like that. You kind of have to figure out like, what's the root of this? Like, why am I doing this? You know, Mm -hmm. part of mine was I'm not a controlling person at all, but I've put myself in a position over the last gosh, like almost two decades of like being in control as a CEO and a boss. Yeah, I make the decisions. I'm in control of everything. What I do, who, who does what, And sometimes that he can, I can easily eke into just like my personal life where I'm just like, I am the boss. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just kind of in that, like, all right, let's go, go, go. You know, I'm not in a rude way. I'm not, not bossy. Not like, I just mean like that mindset of like, all right, problem. This is a solution problem. Here's the solution. Go, go, go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I kind of just get in that mindset. And so what happens is, you know, if I'm not driving the car, if I'm not planning the plans, if I'm not picking where, you know what I mean? So having having that moment where I was like, Whoa, dude, like just sit back and shut up and just enjoy the ride for a second. And I, I've had to, so when you talked about being uncomfortable with things, even little things like that, you kind of have to gut, you know, check yourself and be like, what are you doing around? That's maybe adding to this stress that doesn't need to be there. Just, you know what I mean? Just kind of embrace it a little bit and not try to force something that doesn't really need to be forced. You are so right. I'm just, I can see, I can see this in various elements of my life where I'm also controlling and want things to happen. And the more I sit back 
relax and just let things unfold. Like you often want to uh, control what your kids or family do because you can see them going in the wrong direction in a certain thing. And sometimes whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You can cause unnecessary stress. I know I do it a lot. So yeah. I've just been more relaxed and spending time with my dad, for example, I often get very stressed with my dad. I'm like, why aren't you doing these things? Like this is the clear way you need to move forward. But actually just, just chilling with my dad and letting him do what he wants to do. Cause that's what makes him him has made me a lot happier. Cause I'm not trying to control how we do things. It shows up in different ways, but getting back to maybe the crux of where this feeds as an entrepreneur and as running startups, this is obviously very stressful, high pay, high paced, it's not for the faint of heart. This is not for everyone, right? And having the title and all that, or the, you know, I have a company, it's, it's, yeah, it's not always fun. <laughs> In fact, it's probably like if there was a table or a balance, you know what I mean? It'd probably be most of the time it's pretty stressful. And I think I always describe it like everyone has a plan to get punched in the face. And it's just, I feel like sometimes I wake up and just get punched in the face, like with something new that I got to deal with. And I think what happens for me is this subject of burnout. And I don't think that everyone deals with burnout the same way, but I think it's interesting if you can start to understand the early signs of the burnout. So for me, burnout, I can, I know burnout is coming for me when my fuse becomes very short about little things. Any little yeah. thing in my life that starts to just, I just am like, I cannot deal with that right now. That's when I see like, I've maybe pushing too hard. I just, I need to just start to make some adjustments throughout my week to bring down the stress, mm -hmm. to bring down some of the things I'm doing. Maybe there's things that I'm struggling to say no to, you know, being more in control of my schedule, being more in control of my calendar and not taking on so many things and learning to say no and feel comfortable with that. And it's okay mm. to reduce the chances of hitting burnout because I'm, my fuse is starting to get really short. Yeah. That's interesting that you like almost let it get to that point where you can feel your fuse getting short. I've often just let burnout happen and burnout can be different things to different people. But for me, it's sort of falling into that depression like state where I don't want to do anything and I, I don't know the tells. I can't see it coming. It just happens. But I've realized what makes it happen, which is not taking breaks, like actual days off. If I'm feeling a bunch of momentum and motivation, I'm just go, 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 doing <laughs> stuff, making stuff happen. I'm like, I'm loving this energy. And it's so hard to put the brakes on because if yeah. I keep going like this, JR, that is when burnout's going to yeah. happen because I'm pushing myself beyond where I know mm -hmm. I can go from experience. So what I have to do is stop myself when I'm feeling good and take that time to do fun stuff away from work because work is what leads to it. Really. Yeah. I could work seven days a week if I wanted to 12 hour days, but I know that I've got to restrict myself and the last few weeks, I've been feeling great, Jay. I've been doing loads of work, really been enjoying doing this pod, but I know I need to pause and take time off. And I just said this weekend, I'm taking it off. Like I'm not going to even look at my laptop. I'm just going to relax, range, go and see my dad, went and played around with the camera stuff with him. Then on Sunday, I just like ran around with my sister and we did fun things all day, went for food. And then Monday, I was like, you know what? I'm going to have an easy day. I'm going to do a little bit of editing in the morning. I'm going to take the day off. And I did. And I'm in a very privileged position to do that. But that is what it takes for me to stop it getting worse and worse and worse. Do, can you relate to that? Or do you? Do oh, yeah, you, like, absolutely. No, do do you put anything in place for you to stop you getting yeah. to like that snappy point? Yeah. 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 And I think I made it like a really big point too. this year. This is going to sound really silly but just like if there was if the sun was out like i just made it a point to like be out in the sun taking a walk whatever it is just kind of like trying to get in the sun every day um yeah that was pretty cool that was a that was like an easy one where i didn't have to think a whole lot do anything different with my day just get out there for a second and do that so i i mean yeah i mean I, but i think it's all related i think it's all the same with what you're saying like it's just everyone kind of does it maybe a little bit different in terms of mental health for employees at lemon squeezy 
are you doing anything to make sure your employees don't burn out or how they're addressing their mental health as someone who is sort of close to it? Oh yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I, I mean, because I've dealt with it, I think I have a lot of empathy and I think all the founders of Lemon Squeezy are very similar. Like, you know, I think we all have our moments and we need our times. And, and so we do that for each other, but then yeah, the employees it's, I like it because most of the employees will just ping me on DM. Like, Hey, I, I think I need a whole week off. That literally mm-hmm. just going to be a, feeling a little burnt. I'm feeling a little tired. I just need a week off. Yeah. Sounds good. When do you need it? Next week. Perfect. We'll cover you. Like there's not even a question of, well, can you just wait a little bit? Cause we're a little busy right now. You know, it's like, no, you take that time. We need you at a hundred percent. So if you need that for sure. And we've had it, I've had it to the point where, you know, someone said we need some time off and then they come back and said, I hate to do this, but I don't think I took enough time. And it's like, can I just take another day? I'm like, take another week. Mm-hmm. Literally my response was just take another week. Like we don't really do a schedule, which maybe is yeah. good or bad. And maybe it works right now because we're only 15 of us, but I don't really keep track of how much time people take off. I just, I assume that people want, are a players. Everyone on the team is an a player. They want to do good work. And so, you know, I, I respect their time that they need. If that ends up being more than the, you know, whatever you want to call it, two weeks of allocated paid time off, you know what I mean? It's, it's okay. Like I'd rather you just be, yeah. you know, or if you need to take days off here and there, it's, it's fine. We'll figure it out. Yeah. I, I don't know if you realize how impactful that is for people that work for you, that you have that attitude towards it, because I know I've asked for time off mental health reasons and it's been denied. And, I just go down and down and down and down. It gets worse. Like I'm good for no one uh, when I get to that stage. And mm-hmm. that feeling when you do find someone who understands and goes, of course, take time, take a week, take two, whatever you need. The relief it gives you to know that you have the support of your employer, your boss, your client, to take that time who understands will make you want to work 10 times harder for them or be more productive or push yourself forward. And I just want to thank you for that. And I hope that if there's any people that are managing organizations who haven't gone through this, can sort of follow your lead. And you're not going to help anyone by denying them that time that they need if they're going through mental health struggles. Yeah. I think you just nailed it. I think it's it's more to of... That person's there physically, but mentally, if the, you know what I mean, it's just, uh, it's just a waste. You know what I mean? You might as well just kind of do the right thing, give them a second and then come back at a hundred percent. And in the end, like you're going to get more production out of that person. Right. And you know, it'll evolve if we get to more employees and stuff, we might have to have some stuff in place just to make sure we don't, you know, we have, we always have to like handle support queue and things like that to make sure that there's always someone there kind of covering. But yeah, no, I appreciate that. I think that's, I think that's good. Do you have anything else in place? Like, do you, do you pay for anything to help, help staff? Like when, when they do have these right now, we don't have anything like set in stone, you know, obviously like when we bring people on, we'll do like budgets for like home offices and stuff. But we have talked about that though, which is like required time off right and go you you have to go do something but i had actually i I don't know yet how we're going to do that but we've we've even discussed like you know we've got this package for you where we've we're sending you here or you know what i mean like kind of force them to go and and do that because we live in a world where it's really easy to pick up your phone and check slack and check twitter and i'm gone i'm not working but i'm just sitting here doom scrolling and you know getting all of my dopamine hits that i need you know as opposed to just really detoxing and resetting right have you ever had it that people go too far with that and that as you as a ceo it's a judgment call right how do you help someone that like they've gone through one week another week and they're still not right like you you might have had this with me as i've gone through more and more challenges and i'm not hitting the deadlines and i'm struggling i need more time How'd you help someone like that? Or I mean, it goes back to the very beginning of the episode, which is my friend, right? And mm-hmm. and he really pushed it to a point where it was, you know, it got to a point where it was no longer I had the ability to cover it where no one knew what was going on. 
Mm. It leaked into everything and everyone kind of knew. And, it, but it was never like a shameful thing. It was just, this is what we have to do. You know, like I didn't actually didn't care. Maybe it was because he was my friend and I'd known him for so long. I would think I would still do that for someone that I could see that was really struggling. So in fact, I did it. I never stopped doing it. And it wasn't until he decided to, he got a really, really amazing job offer for triple, like double the salary. I mean, it was ridiculous the amount of money he was yeah. going to go make. He left my company. And I think within two months he had taken his life. So we went 10 years of him kind of, I feeling like I was trying to really help understand him and give him what he needed. And, and then, you know, within just a few months of him leaving, he was, he was gone. That's tough, man. Yeah. I mean, I will caveat this whole conversation saying that we're not experts and this is from no. our own experiences yeah. and sort of what we found has worked for us. But I think like universally, if someone's struggling, speak to someone like a hundred percent, speak to someone. We don't talk enough about this stuff. And if you're struggling, have a conversation, hell reach out to us. Like I, I'm so happy to speak to anyone about mental health because what I've been through, because I know how much it has helped to talk. And, yeah, and I, I think too, like the one thing I will say, you know, you made, you just made a comment like it, you know, is it overlooked? Is it, are we being too soft? Right? Like that's mm. a word that we use a lot. And yeah, I do think, you know, I might sound like a little, like a villain here, but there is a point where you kind of do have to check, you know, I don't want you, people will take advantage of it. They probably are being too soft and they need to be pushed, especially in kind of maybe the world we're in. Like, yes, you're going to have to work. You're going to have to do things you don't like to do and you can't just shut down, right? You have to kind of face it. But I'm not trying to also be unsensitive and maybe what something's going through. It's not, to me, it's just, it's not the same thing. It's like, so we have to, that's a very fine line. And I think that's maybe sometimes where people struggle to bring this up and how to talk about it because they don't want to come across harsh or insensitive. But at the same time, it's like sometimes, I guess as a man, I don't know in the, in, with women, but you know, sometimes I need a friend to come smack me in the face and be like, buck up, dude. Like get your shit together. Let's go. Quit quit feeling sorry for yourself and get your get your act together. And sometimes you need to hear that in life, you know, yeah. and that's okay. You're you're right. And this leads back to what I was saying about my realization that I need to feel uncomfortable to get satisfaction. Mm. And when I'm too comfortable, that's that softness. That's the, I know I need to do things that I don't want to do because that makes me feel good, but it's hard to have that realization in the moment. And I've always thought I can find ways out of this, but it's going to take getting uncomfortable and long. It's hard for me to look long-term, but when you do look, look long-term, it's having that pushing through things you don't necessarily want to do and also finding enjoyment in those things, enjoyment mm -hmm. in the process. It's very hard to do, but the more you do it, the more you build up that muscle, the easier it is. So yeah, if you're feeling down, if you're struggling, speak to someone, but there is a case of you will feel better when you push through doing those things you don't really want to do or the things that are hard are challenging. Life is really fucking hard. Running a startup is even fucking harder, but you got to, try and find a way of dealing with those problems because you will feel better after it. And I try and apply my cycling metaphor to a lot of other situations I find myself in. It's like, if mm -hmm. this was a hill, I want to relish it. I want to like yeah. tackle it and enjoy getting over the other side of this challenge of this problem. Have you read The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday? I haven't. Great book. Oh my goodness, you must read it. I read it on holiday and it basically how do you frame obstacles or problems as opportunities? And when I'll you take it that out. approach, everything just life becomes more interesting and mm -hmm. you're figuring out how to solve problems rather than letting them overcome you. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. I, I cool. don't have, I don't have anything to add to that. That's like what? exactly that's what it is. Well, it, it was a bit of a heavy episode, but thank you for like bringing up this topic. It's something that is close to me. I hope that people have yeah. found it useful. What about some more positive stuff? What's happening at Lemon Squeezy? 
Have you launched any new features? Well, first of all, I mean, if people have made it this far, I'm sorry if James said, everybody go watch the video because Jared's setup's all done and then my camera died. So <laughs> sorry about that. But yeah, no, I have the biggest, one of the most popular, one of the most requested features is dropping this week. I guess I can say it now, but it'll be, it'll be checkout customization. So, or it'll be customizations of like your brand, your emails, your checkouts, your store, like customer portal, like all the colors, buttons, you know, stuff like that. You can, which will be big. I think that'll help a lot of people, you know, from, I even think about just something silly, like they have a SaaS app that's dark mode and it comes to our checkout page that's light, you know, so you can kind of customize it how you want. So I'm excited about that. And then we have a big Black Friday. We've got all these cool deals of all the merchants have kind of reached out. And we have a big mm -hmm. post coming out with like all these Black Friday deals for people, which is pretty cool. And then I kind of like after our last few episodes, I've gotten my marketing hat a little bit back on. So I've been publishing some content. We did a downloadable guide for Black Friday, which like within 24 hours of like 500 emails. Damn, man. Did you we do added that? Just from, yeah, we, well, like it, it was a team effort, of course. Yeah. But, yeah, like Sam, who does some marketing, and then Liam and Orman, and you know, like we all kind of got together and thought, hey, let's help people become successful on Black Friday. And we did a downloadable guide, and within 24 hours, we had like 500 people download it. It's pretty cool. So, yeah. So, yeah, just trying to, I don't know, just keep chugging uh, along. Have you seen uh, an increase in GMV this week? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, the last, this month, I don't know how. But we're literally going to grow by another like 30% month over month, which is insane at this point. But yeah, I don't know what's going to happen because it's already starting to creep up and I'm just expecting an explosion, which would be awesome. So anyway, it's good catching up. You too, man. Thanks for doing this episode.